neat that uh, really this whole summer is coming together in an amazing way. So galactic starveyors, this is an opportunity for you to participate, give this to somebody, let them know to look to the heavens to see the glory of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Look up. And I'll tell you something, uh, you know, I'm kind of a woods kind of guy. I like to get out in the woods and climb up in a tree. And, you know, animals, if they would just look up, there would be no trouble for them. <laughs> and so, <laughs> and uh, that's the reality for us. That's the reality for us. And so let's help our community realize when they look up into the heavens and see this thing that's about to happen, to understand that uh, it's God. It's God. Amen? So we're talking about again today what we talked about last week and just kind of continuing it. And it's not a problem to repeat it. Okay? Has anybody noticed that it's hot? Huh? Have you noticed that? Okay. Communities where they have a tremendously hot summer, what goes up with the heat? Crime. Violent crime. Why? Ignorance. <laughs> well, sort of. Because you see, it challenges us in our emotional lives. It challenges us in our emotional lives. And the fact is, is that we get challenged by the circumstances. Remember this. Circumstances never determine you. They only reveal you. Circumstances never determine you. They only reveal you. So when you're hot, it's going to reveal something. You see? When you're stressed, when there's too much weak at the end of the money, when there's difficult people around you, it reveals something. When the wind blows, what do the trees do? They bend, and some of them break. <laughs> yeah, some of them bend too much. That's right. You see, it reveals weakness. It reveals weakness. So I want to I help us to understand today that we need to pay very close attention to our emotional lives. This is not a psychology lesson. This is the Word of God in your everyday life. What good is it to know that Jesus Christ is the Messiah, that God is alive, that the Lord is working in this world if it doesn't make any difference in your life? What does it actually matter? The devil knows that Jesus is God. The devil knows that Jesus died on the cross and paid for sins. The devil knows that he's whooped. But what difference does it make? None. He just keeps right on working away as if somehow or another he's not going to go to that lake of fire. He still lives in his anger and his frustration because he hates all that God loves. See? Now I want us to understand today now, which one's your favorite character? And before you say that, look at it this way. Which one do you end up playing the most? Which one do you play the most? I want us to understand this, this is just a, a really good illustration for you and I. And it's important for you and I to think about this. What's going on in your emotional faith? What is going on in your emotional faith? What are you actually doing? How are you actually handling yourself in day-to-day -day life and relationships? Here we go. All right, open. Hmm. 
This looks new. Think it's safe? What is it? Uh, okay, caution. There is a dangerous smell, people. Hold on, what is that? This is disgust. She basically keeps Riley from being poisoned, physically and socially. That is not brightly colored or shaped like a dinosaur. Hold on, guys. It's broccoli! <laughs> yeah! Well, I just saved our lives. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're welcome. Riley, if you don't eat your dinner, you're not going to get any dessert. Wait, did he just say we couldn't have dessert? That's anger. He cares very deeply about things being fair. So that's how you want to play it, old man? No dessert? Oh, sure. We'll eat our dinner right after you eat this. Ah! Right, ah! right. Here comes an airplane. Ah! Oh, airplane. We got an airplane, everybody. <gasps> Every one of us is spiritually a child at the beginning of our faith. Every one of us. It doesn't matter how old you are. Your faith is a different age, possibly, than your body. To actually mature as a believer is an important reality, and it does not necessarily go along with age. It should, but it doesn't, does it? Now, I want us to understand today in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, which is known as what chapter? The love chapter, okay? Love chapter. If I speak in the tongues of men and angels but have not love, I am a noisy gong or clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, if I have all faith so as to remove mountains but have not love, I am nothing. Just take a moment and think about that, just that last sentence. Move mountains? Move mountains? Love is bigger and better than moving mountains? Prophetic understanding? All wisdom and mysteries? Absolutely. Do you know what the actual world said about the new believers when they began to don their life upon this world? It didn't say that they had amazing understanding of mysterious things about God. What it actually said was, is that see how they love each other. Josephus, who's actually one of the historians who wrote about the history of the Jews and actually wrote about the coming of the people of the way and the difference it made in their lives. He did not comment on the reality of their understanding of Old Testament prophecy. He commented on what? How much they cared for each other. And how unwilling they were to turn against their God and their faith, even when they were facing death. How they shared everything they had. And that's all about love, friends. If I give away all I have and I deliver up my body to be burned but have not love, I've gained nothing. Love is and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable even when it's 97 degrees out. or resentful, it does not rejoice at wrongdoing. It's okay to be upset with wrong. There are times when the emotions, fear and anger are appropriate. If there's a snake going between my legs, guess what I'm allowed to do? Fight and flight. Okay, how many of you here are gonna kill the snake? All right. These are the fighters. <laughs> How many of you are going to run from the snake? All right. These are the flighters. Okay. These are the flighters. I want you to understand we are not to be emotionally determined. And there are times when some of the emotions that are mostly not appropriate are appropriate. But the fact is, is that we rejoice with the truth. We live in love and joy with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. 
Let me repeat that again. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. The love of God. One of the real temptations and dangers for people who are of faith or just straight up religious, and those are different people, is that they can actually get arrogant. They can get selfish. They can be self-righteous. And you'll always find those people by how they respond to others. Whether they love them or whether they hate them, whether they have joy or whether they're disgusted. There are many people who are in churches that live with a great deal of disgust. I want you to understand, as for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, okay? When I was in seminary, you know, I made a B average. In my doctorate, I made an A average. In my college, I made a C average. <laughs> I was a work in progress, no doubt about it, okay? Uh, when I got to college, it took me a minute because I was a brand new Christian, so I had to, had to figure this thing out. But the bottom line is, is that, you know, I look now back at the people who were trained for ministry and they graduated with a straight A average. And guess what? They've left their wife and their children. They've left the ministry. They've demoralized their lives. They've taken from the church. I mean, I, over years... Academics are important, don't misunderstand me. But it doesn't make you a true faith follower. It doesn't make you that. And I want you to understand, these things will cease. These things will cease. Verse nine, it goes on to say, for we know in part, we prophesy in part, but when the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. When I was a, why is he bringing up children now? Why does it bring up children? Huh? Okay, when children cry and throw a fit, and puke and so on and so forth, not everybody's quite as excited about grabbing hold of that child. The fact is, is that there are reactions as children that we put up with on children and so on, but if that carries on into adult life, that's going to be a big problem. You know, you can throw yourself down on the ground when you're 55 years old, but it's not going to work. <laughs> what they say over there? Can't you can't get up. Okay. Okay. Well, <laughs> I'm sorry to hear that for you, but anyway. <laughs> okay, good. And again, you know, the, the fact is, is that, you know, it, it's important for you and I to mature in our faith and how we handle our emotions. I've come to understand the reason that we abuse each other, the reason we abuse our bodies, the reason we abuse elements in our lives is all about emotions. It's all about it. And some of you have never let Jesus Christ actually change the way you deal with life. You handle life in the flesh, not in the spirit. That's why you get angry. That's why you're disgusted. That's why you're envious. That's why you experience those things. Because you see, if you have the spirit, what will you have? Love, joy, come on folks, peace. Man, that's easy to say, isn't it? Go out there in the 97 degrees with no air conditioner in your car. <laughs> you know, Pammy and I, we had one night the air conditioner didn't work at the house and it was uh, 91 degrees in the house. And man, I don't like to sweat. <laughs> Not like that. I love the sweat, like, you know, like exercise and work and so on. I love that. 
But laying in bed sweating is just not my fun time. Amen? And, uh, but the fact is, is that, you know, you can get all upset about that. You can bite each other. You can punch each other. You can, you know. But you see, that circumstance only reveals what we're about. It only reveals what we're about. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a mature man of faith, I gave up childish handling of emotions. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. What does that really mean? I want to tell you what it means. I see the end result. Your faith in the long view determines your temporal behavior. Amen? If I told you, if you stay here for two hours, if you sit here and stay here for two hours, I'm going to give everybody a week's vacation in Florida for free. All right, all right. Yeah. You would stick out. You would be, you'd be here till 1106. Why? Unless you don't like Florida. <laughs> because you see, there's something that you are looking forward to that makes you stay where you are for the moment. You see? For the hope that is laid out for you. I want you to know as believers, we became mature people of faith and we gave up childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I have been fully known. So now faith, hope, and love abide, these three, but the greatest of these is what? Love. And I want you to understand, think about what your triggers really are. What are the triggers to your faith? What are they? What are the triggers to your faith? Meaning, what ticks you off? Here's one thing I can tell you. People that are opposite of you tick you off. Because what makes you tick? The opposite of that? Are you with me? Ticks you off. Those of you that have real sensitive hearts, who do you have a hard time getting along with? Those that are just black and white. See? People that are tasked have a hard time with people that are relational. People that are tasked have a hard time with people that are relational. Okay? Generals, and there's only about 5% of the population that are actually that kind of person. Thank God. Amen? But they don't care how you feel, okay? But they will take you places you'll never go. They will lead you in places. Now, don't misunderstand me. A really good leader cares about the people they lead, okay? But they still drive, they still drive. I want you to understand, what are your triggers? Because those triggers lead to relational failure with God in your life. took me a while to really reconcile my sister dying and God being okay. You ever have trouble with that? It takes some of you a while to be able to believe that God is God and people have still hurt you. It's a trigger for some of you to see others do well when they don't give a rip about God and you're serving God and it's nothing but trouble for you. And you can get triggered into what? I'm done with you, God. I'm done with you. Again, that's your trigger. Your expectations are your idols. This is also a progression of an idol. 
I might have jumped into something so quick that I lost you. But if you'll think about it for a moment, you'll understand what I'm saying. Expectations are idols. Expectations are idols. And you serve them, and you demand others to serve them, and if you don't and they don't, you have relational failure. I want you to understand, God is your love. Amen? God is your love. And when you love God with all your heart, soul, and mind, you love your neighbor as yourself. And you handle your emotions properly. Why? Because you've got love in your life. You are loved. <laughs> so you got to get it out. you got to communicate. That's my wife's word. Communication. Communicate. So you have to learn how to communicate. When my wife and I were married five years, we went to a marriage council because we had to learn how to argue. We had to learn how to resolve conflict. That's what she said. <laughs> Apparently, shut up. What? Shut up. What? Shut up. What? Shut up. What? Is not a healthy discussion. <laughs> so we go to the marriage counselor and she asks my wife, why are you here? My wife gives a 20-minute dissertation on why we're there. And she looks at me and goes, why are you here? I said, because she told me to come. <laughs> you don't think you should be here? And I go, well, all we ever fight about is our lack of money. And I find it ironic that we spend $100 a week to learn how to do that. <laughs> my wife looked at me and said, shut up. I said, what? You see, he, he's talking about actually handling his emotions. Handling the emotions in our relationships. In our relationships. And that's really what it's all about. Now, I want you to understand that the scripture is very clear about this. In Romans 12, it says this. Let love... Did I go past myself? Yeah, okay. Yeah, I know what I'm doing now. Okay, I'm back here. All right, let love... <laughs> let love be genuine. Abhor what is evil, hold fast to what is good, love one another with brotherly affection. Now notice this. This chapter comes as a culmination to many chapters of belief. And if you'll look in the, old, in the New Testament, you'll find all of the doctrine up front and then this is how it's applied. This is how it's applied and it's almost always relational. It's almost always relational. Up front is truth. Now apply it in your relationship with God, yourself, and with others. And that's really what it is. Love one another, brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not be slothful in zeal. Be fervent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in what? Hope. Be patient in tribulation. These are all emotional, mature activities. Be constant in prayer. What is prayer? Prayer is centering yourself on God and bringing your emotional life into line with Him. Can I tell you something? Prayer never changes God. Hello? It changes you. You focus. Contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. Bless those who persecute. What? Huh? Bless those who persecute you. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be wise in your own sight. Repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Again, don't be triggered. Don't be triggered. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. To the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. And for by doing so, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but what? Overcome evil with good. And I want you to understand how you deal with God is demonstrated by how you engage it. How you actually deal with yourself is demonstrating 
whether God's in your life or not. How you deal with others is demonstrating about God in your life. And I want you to get this. This is very important. I want you to see this. I want you to visually see it and I want you to emotionally see it. I want you to intellectually see it. I want you to see this. Notice, there is no what? Fear. Notice fear, fear, fears. All right? What's the answer? Love. Love. We're allowed to fear one thing. Anybody know what that is? God. Took me a long time to figure that one out. If you haven't figured it out, why? give me a call. We'll sit and talk about it. Because that, that used to bother me. I'd be like, you know what? Now, why would I fear God? Well, what it means really is that I actually respect him. I respect him. You don't fear anything else because whatever you fear, that is what you will actually serve. And your emotional life demonstrates your fears. Your emotional life demonstrates your fears. There is no fear in love. But perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with what? Punishment. And whoever fears has not been perfected in love. Go back now. Bring 1 Corinthians 13 back over. The perfect has not yet come. This is perfection. To be in love with God. To let God's love lead you to be in love with life and others. And it perfects us and we love because he first loved us. Not because we love ourselves. So, I want you to think about this, okay? And I'm gonna preach on this one more time. Turn to your neighbor and say, I don't know. <laughs> It'll probably be hot this next week, so you might as well come on in. Let's work on it together. But I want you to understand, I want us to get this because you see, what is it that actually shows that this church is a church serving the Lord Jesus Christ? Love. Love. The proper handling of emotion. I struggle with fears all the time. How about you? Don't have any friends? I struggle with fears all the time. For us guys, most of the time when we're angry, it's because we're actually afraid. Okay? Ladies, when you get upset with people in your lives and you get kind of, you know, trenchy, I think that's your word for anger. Why is it? Because you're afraid for somebody you care about. You're afraid for them. But I want you to understand, perfect love casts out fear. Perfect love casts out fear. Not too long ago, I really had a bad Sunday. And I decided, nah, I'm, I'm not going to call in sick. <laughs> you know, it's kind of rough to do that. <laughs> so I came and, you know, several people said, what's the matter with you? Uh, I'm not having the best day. It happens, okay? One out of seven is going to happen on Sunday sometime. So I came in the sanctuary, I sat there on the front row, and I just let court and the praise team lead me. The tears started streaming down my cheeks. Pretty soon, I began to actually feel the stuff come off of me. And I was in pretty good shape after about 20 minutes of praise and worship. You see what I'm saying? The love of God perfects us. Amen? Amen. So, I want to encourage you to think about your emotional life. Think about your emotional life. And let the Lord lead you to maturity. Okay? Some of you might be back here, you know, you're just that little worm, you know, and you kind of got to get into that cocoon and let it kind of work on you a bit. And then some of you are kind of coming out of it, you know, and, and some of you are kind of seeing you got some wings and eventually you'll be able to fly. But I want you to understand... It is a progression of growth. It's sanctification. It is the work of the Holy Spirit in your life. And the actual demonstration of this is 
that you have love for one another. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's stand together. As we sing this song, you work on yourself. Let it center you on the Lord. Let the Holy Spirit come over you. Let God work through you. Quit worrying about other people. Quit thinking about who needs to hear this. Think about what God wants you to do, what God's saying to you, what the Holy Spirit's saying to you. And as you sing this song, let the Lord work in your life. Amen.